What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Real-Time Landscape Architect slash UVision. It's the same software under two different names, but this is the software I've used for the last year or so. Best bang for your buck on the market in my opinion. I've created some really cool designs with it and I've also learned a couple really easy little tips they're gonna make it a lot smoother of a transition into this 3D software. So a couple things that you wanna think about before you start rendering a design on your computer. I always find it's best to sketch it out on paper first. That way you can go through all the little proportion things. You can get your shapes and your sizes correct. And it's a lot easier to make adjustments when it's just on paper with pencil or ruler. Once I have that, that's when I go to the 3D software and start rendering it. So once I have that, which I've done for this design, open up the software and it goes pretty simple. So I'm gonna show you all the little tips, how to build a pergola using a modeling tool, how to do an outdoor kitchen, furniture, all that kind of stuff. So if you like this, please hit subscribe. I spent a lot of time on this video and a lot of people are charging for this kind of stuff, but I wanna give it out for free. So just hit subscribe, that's it. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this. If there's any other things about the software that you wanna see, I'll probably do like a whole series of little tips on this software. So just let me know what you're having trouble with and I will try to make a video on it. So hope you like it and good luck. Okay, so we're gonna jump into this design here and what we're gonna start with is rendering in the house. So we're in the building tab here click on house and i already have the dimensions figured out here so this part is pretty easy it's got a nice interface for drawing the house which i really like it takes a lot of the kind of tough details out of it so basically you just do a perimeter and it's going to automatically populate a roof, all the walls, everything like that. So it's super easy. So that is my outside dimensions of the house. And the depth here doesn't really matter because we're just worried about the backyard. So as long as I have that correct, we're good. So now that I have the dimensions in, take a look back at a picture of the house. And you want to get like the wall height and everything like that right. So this is about 18 feet high so we're going to set the wall at 18 feet and i'm going to adjust the roof pitch a little bit i just try to get this kind of stuff pretty close it doesn't affect what we're actually building so it doesn't matter too much but um so now that we have that that's a really good representation of the shell of the house I'm going to start by putting in doors and windows. So this is also very easy. You want to be in this perspective mode to do doors and windows. And I have a triple French door on this area. And it's right in the middle of this wall. And the elevation is at about 14 inches. So we have that door in there. There is a patio door an entry door, a single French door, Okay. Single French door here. And what I know about this is that the center of it is 13 feet from this wall, this wall here. So I'm going to go to play in detail, pull out 13 feet. So that's going to be my reference point. And I'm just going to slide this over a little bit. So right there looks good. Another thing you can do with these 2D symbols is you can click on this here. 
and you can change that to something a little bit more out of the way. So this door here is a foot above the ground and we have one more door over by the garage, which is over here. I'm just gonna change the style of this. So this goes right here and we're gonna change the symbol and this one is 16 or six inches above the ground so that's it now i'm going to put in some of the windows and this part super easy check your measurements um, if there's any critical windows that are going to affect the design so i'm just going to start putting these in i'm going to change the model here i'm just going to do something pretty simple so we have one window over here I am just going to kind of copy and paste this so make some of them bigger this one's a little bit of a bigger window you can spend a lot of time messing around with this um, but for right now it's not super important so we're just gonna get windows in here we've got a second story window over here and now I can just copy paste in place have this over here another one here and we'll just do two of them up here because there's actually a triple window but once you get the hang of it, you can spend as much time as you want getting that super accurate, but for right now, that's going to be plenty for us. Gets the idea. And none of the windows are really a critical um, element of the design. So sometimes you're going to want to be really exact with that. Other times it's not going to matter as much. So now that we have the house built, I'm going to go ahead and we have a deck that's going to go in here. So a good thing to know is they have this little magnet um feature here and that basically just adjusts your snap setting so right now it's snapping to the grid which is nice for some things like when you're initially drawing out your uh design but for certain other things you're going to want to make finer kind of adjustments on it so it's not as good so let's go to the perspective here and just like that it automatically puts your decks at two feet for whatever reason so this is actually only going to be a foot high and it automatically puts railings everywhere so you go to toggle railing we can take the railing away from the house obviously don't want it there and let's put some steps in so the only place we have stairs is over here I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Okay. And on this side, it's just going to be one step down to the patio. So there's not going to be an actual step, but we will be taking away this railing. So the way you want to do that, select that, edit points. We're going to insert a point right here about four feet and then we can go to toggle railing and we can take that away so there you go one last thing I'll do is just kind of switch around some of the some of the textures that we have here let's try that looks like a nice color um, I'm gonna change the board direction to 90 degrees that is just something I always prefer and then I like to shrink this down to two feet for the pattern size that gets it closer to how it would actually be and how many boards would actually be there so the next step is to mess with the railing a little bit and I always like to use black aluminum railings so we're in the railing post section this is all part of the deck tool so 
it has the posts on the outside. I prefer them on the inside. Now we're going to change the color of those. We're going to go to a solid color and go black. And cap style, we want flush with railing because we are going to do a cocktail rail, which is really nice. So got these metal balusters here. I'm just going to change them up a little bit. And instead of wrought iron, we are going to go with solid black. Okay, nice and easy. Now we'll go to bottom railing. I do not want to use default bottom railing. I want to change that to black. And I'll change that also to a two by two. It's a little sleeker. And the last step is our top railing. So I want to go six by two which is essentially a deck board. It's a little bit thicker than a deck board, but that's the option that they give you here. So I'm going to use that color. Looks pretty good. Okay, so that's our deck for now. We'll do a couple other things to it. You know what, I'll actually add the accent strip right now. So we still have our magnet grid selection tool. Sometimes it's easier to go to plan view to really get where you're trying to hit. So this is going to put in any borders or anything like that. And just like that, it populates a border. It's kind of defaulted to go to pavers. So we're going to go up to deck and fence. I like this com composite too. And the width, we're going to make six inches. Now if you take a look at it, you can see the grain is running the wrong direction. So on the material selection, I'm just going to change that to 90 degrees. And there you go. It's just a small little detail, but makes it look nice. I'm not loving the color of this deck, so I'm also going to change that. We're going to go with this composite 4. And what I do basically is just kind of... mess with the uh, mess with the colors a little bit we use decorators that's a nice color we use decorators boards so they don't have the exact colors in here so I just kind of mess around with it and get it as close as possible you can go to this edit color and brightness of any material so you can see you can really mess with the colors and kind of create any color you want if you take enough time with it but that looks pretty good I like that now the deck's done, we are ready to go to the patio. So again, I've already figured out all the dimensions here. And that's the easiest way to really kind of work through some of the issues of the design and really figure out what's going to work best. So we're going to have two kind of separate patios here. So you can see this also populates with a custom border in here. So I am, and you can also go to edit border and take the border away from any places that you don't want it, which is really nice. The only thing I'm going to do with this is change this to eight inches. So it's essentially two bricks wide. I think that just looks a little bit better. And if we go to perspective, we can see this is flat on the ground. And I want this to be at 8 inches. One thing that's kind of weird about this software, you can see as I'm moving this, because this patio is intersecting with the deck, it's going to adjust the elevation of the deck as well. So this is one thing that I find pretty annoying with the software. But like you can see, as I'm going, the deck's moving up too. I don't want it to do that, so what I'm going to do is select the deck, turn off my snap tool, and just move it ever so slightly. That might be enough right there. And now that they're not intersecting, they're going to move independently. So, yep. So now you can see, okay, we're going to make the height 
8 inches. And now you can see it just steps right down, which is nice. And let's see. So we have a two-tiered patio here. I'm going to draw out the other tier. And this is going to be like a fire pit area. So this is 14 by 14. Again, auto populates a border. I'm going to reduce that to 8 inches again. I'll show you how to play around with the different materials and everything, but for right now, I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. So we have the patios in here. That is kind of the bones of the whole design here. Our next step is going to be doing a retaining sitting wall around this fire pit area, and there's also a kitchen area here. So there's a couple different ways to do that. I'm going to start with the sitting wall and the retaining wall. So I'm going to go here, and this is snapping right to my midpoint. So that's what I want to go off of. You can also see here, see how this is curving that line? I want to select this curve type, which is just straight. The other one is really good for making, you know, different, oops, messed up there. Let me try that again. The other one is really nice for creating curved walls and it makes it really nice and smooth, which is cool. But um, this is, we just want straight here. So you can see it put it on the outside of the patio. It's going to do that with a couple different types of materials and tools here. So all you have to do is go to switch sides. And now it's going on the other side of that line that I drew. And I'm going to adjust the height. I like this to be at. Uh, about 20 inches so that looks good so another thing that we're going to do is you can see it has this accent detail border accent row i'm just going to keep it nice and simple so i'm going to eliminate that and that's just enabled or disabled makes it really easy and just to give you an idea of what this space is going to look like i'm going to go to landscape and accessory and I'm going to put in our fire pit. So for this design, I really like this nice, simple, modern fire pit. Just like that, right in the middle. And you can see it looks a little bit small compared to this area. So I am going to make it a little bit bigger. So we'll make it six feet wide. That would be nice. But since it's on scaled evenly here, you can see that it's made it a lot higher. So I want to reduce that down to 15 inches. Sounds good. It's a little bit lower than our wall. And boom, just like that, we've got a huge fire pit, which looks awesome. So now that we have that, the next step is going to be a kitchen area over here. So this is something that I'm going to build completely with the modeling tool. And I get a lot of questions on this. How am I making custom, you know, pergolas and bars and everything? So I'm going to show you. It's pretty easy. So I'm going to make this just a box. So now I have a box. It automatically makes it as high as it is long. So I obviously don't want it that high. This is going to be bar height, so I'm going to have it at 3 foot 6, 42 inches. It's a foot thick. And that is our first wall of the outdoor kitchen. And what I like to do is build this removed from the patio because it just makes it a little bit simpler. And you'll see what I'm going to do in a little bit. I will, uh, we're going to just make this six feet that sounds good makes it easier to um draw it out how i want and then i'm actually going to group everything together and move it over there so this has made the height six feet but we want this at three feet so basically this is our cooking area this is going to be bar top stools over here and it just automatically puts this material in here 
but we are going to be changing that. So let's see, we'll just go to material. Again, this is the Uvision software, so it only has uh, Unilock textures in it, which I'm not crazy about because we only use Teco block, but um, I like to just give kind of a representation of what it's gonna look like pretty close. Okay, so this just has the Unilock stuff, but we are gonna be building this out of Teco block, so I'm just gonna get something that's kind of close. Let's see what this looks like. That's close enough. You know what, I'm actually gonna go with this gray color. That looks good. I'm not super concerned about the textures on here yet. I get a lot of people asking me, you know, how do you sell all this Teco Block stuff without showing them the actual product and the design? But the design's really more for layout and function and all that kind of stuff. I can just show them pictures of other projects that we've done and they'll get the idea of what the product looks like. And they kind of trust me to do what I do. So it works out nicely. I'm just going to change the seating wall to this same texture here. And now I have these two boxes. I'm going to build a countertop now. So I'm going to go back to my plan view, box. Just like that. And while I'm at it, I might as well draw one here as well. Okay, so you can see it made these huge boxes, but this one, I only want one inch thick because this is just a countertop. So now I'm going to raise it up to three foot six. I will do the same thing with this one. One inch thick. This is at three feet. So just like that. And then just to give it some overhang, I'm going to make it a little bit wider, a little bit longer. Same thing with this. Okay. So you can see I put that same material on there. I'm going to go with a white marble. So just go to your material selection, go to marble. This could be like a marble, quartz, granite, whatever you like to use, but just gives them an idea of what that's going to look like. So now we kind of have this built pretty good. Last thing I'm going to do is put in the grill because that's important. So here you go. Just use this one right here. That little circle feature on here is nice to just be able to rotate nice and easily. So I'm going to elevate this. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it a little bit better. Ooh, a little too far. How's that look? Right in the center. That's beautiful. That's where I want it. And you can kind of see this thing start to take shape. So you can do the same thing with access panels, drawers, get as detailed and crazy as you want with it. But for time's sake here, I'm going to make it kind of simple. I'm going to also put stools on this. So let's see what we have. There's a lot of uh, furniture selections in here, which is nice. Um, would be nice to have some more options. But again, this is for my sake, really just to paint the picture for the client and kind of get them uh, get them to see it. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. But as long as they can see it and they trust you, that's all that matters. So I'm going to put these stools in here. And you can see I'm just pasting it in place. And it's clicking to the grid, so it's giving me a nice even spacing, which is nice. So we've got five stools here, and now we've got the outdoor kitchen. It's all the way over here, which we don't want, but we've got like 10 different things. We've got two boxes, we've got two different countertops, grill. All this stuff right now, you can see it's going to move independently. So I'm going to undo that, and what I'm going to do is just 
select all this stuff, right click, and I'm going to group it together. So now this whole thing just moves as one piece, which makes it really easy to make slight adjustments, all that kind of stuff. So this is going to go right here on my design, and I'm actually going to undo the snap tool on this. I want this basically right up to the house. I'm going to move it back a little bit. And we just have a little bit of access here. Really, this is just for the person that's cooking back here to be back here. So you can see, boom, just like that. We've got a kitchen. Looks beautiful. So the next step is going to be our pergola. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So I know that this is going to be 12 feet by 17 feet. So I'm going to go back to the plan view. And really, just to make this easier, what I like to do is go to plan detail, put your click setting back on, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm building this all the way out here. And we have, let's see, 17 feet by 12. So this is just a plain box, it's not in our 3D, it's just a plan detail. So I'm going to go to transparency, make it a little bit more transparent, but this is our outline. So I can start building our pergola and this is all going to be custom built. So I start by going to building and column and my style is just very simple. So I like just plain six by sixes. I think it's nice, sleek, modern. So I have this set here. This automatically sets it at one foot each direction. I want it six by six, but since I've scaled it, it's made it four feet tall. We want that to be seven and a half. So let me go to my 3D and I want to edit the materials. I'm going to put the composite two on here, which is a nice rich brown, which looks like one of the stains that we use a lot. So I'm going to put that right in the corner and Copy, paste in place. I'm going to put that. See, this is a scenario where you want to unclick that magnet setting. Ah. Clicking all over the place here. So we have this right in the corner. Just keep pasting in place. Oops. Accidentally hit delete. So I'm going to paste in place and let me get a little closer. Have this right in the corner. Boom. Easy. Easy peasy. Okay. So I'll go back to the perspective. And now we have our post right in the right location. And I'm going to show you how build the rest of it with the modeling tool. So I'm going to start by building our beams. So I'm going to turn the click setting back on and I know I need this to be 17 feet. So 17 by 6, that looks good. And like you can see it automatically puts the height at 17 feet. Obviously we do not want that. This is going to be a six by 10. So go to 10 inches and I'm going to change the material. We are going to go to that composite two. And again, you can see how the green is going the wrong way. So I'm going to change that to 90 degrees looking good. Again, unclick the snap setting and I'm going to elevate this into place. And essentially you're kind of just building it like you would build a pergola. So just like that, we've got our beam. I'm going to just move this just a little bit. And any fine details like this, you definitely want to have that magnet setting off. So now that we have our first one, what I'm going to do is copy, paste in place, move this back, 
and just like that that looks perfect okay that's pretty close now I'm going to paste in place again I have the same beams going on the corners and you can see this is obviously too long so I am going to shrink this down and this should be 12 feet but I can make it a little bit smaller just so it doesn't stick out and look funny so you just want to kind of scan around make sure that it's right in the right spot and that looks pretty good so I'm going to copy and paste in place and move to this corner so the modeling tool I've told people that I'm building all this stuff with the modeling tool and they think it's going to take forever but you can kind of see once you get you know the pieces that you have it's pretty simple you're just going to kind of build it like you were building it and it's mostly copy and paste so the next step is going to be our rafter so what we're going to have here i'm going to build another box put the click setting back on i'm going to go 11 6. this is only going to be four inches wide you know what? i'm going to make this two inches wide this is just going to be a two by eight and again it automatically makes it as high as it is long so i want this eight inches and again i am going to change the material you know maybe I'll you know I'm gonna try just making this a different color just for the heck of it so you can see I did the same thing with the grain align that in the right direction I like to go back to plan here it makes it a little bit easier to snap these in so right there but you can see this is on the ground so I'm going to elevate this basically what we're going to have here is we have a two by a three by well actually a six by ten beam around the outside and then we have a two by eight here and I'm going to make that flush with the bottom of this beam and then we're going to have two by four purlins go in the opposite direction on top so then that'll be flush with those outside beams and it'll be nice and clean looking so paste in place and paste in place and with the click setting you can see it's just snapping these right into place and i'm putting these two feet on center it's a little bit easier if you do it two feet on center um, even if you're going to build it 16 on center, it just makes it a little bit simpler, um, you know, to snap it in here for the design sake. So what I'm going to do, because it's a little bit off center, is select all these, deselect that magnet tool, and just like that, now we're centered pretty well. So go to perspective. And you can see it's starting to look pretty nice. Now I'm going to have two by fours running the opposite way here. So where did my pergola go? Here it is. So I'm going to go back to the box. I'm going to draw another box. And I'm going to make this, let's see, 16, 7, that's good. And we've got this. This is going to be four feet, four inches wide. It's going to be two inches tall and we're going to do the same thing. We are going to change this to the composite four. Again, we need to change this to a 90 degree grain pattern and let's go back to the plan view. Actually, let's get it to the right height first. So. okay so here as I get really close you can see what I'm trying to achieve here 
boom, just like that. So this is going on top of the two by eight, and then it's gonna intersect with this here, so it's nice and flat. So it's a cool little detail, and it's pretty easy to do, so. And these are also gonna be every two feet. And because this is 12 feet in this direction, it should give me nice, ev nice even spacing right away. So, all right, paste in place, paste in place. And you can see again, it's just clicking, snapping to these settings or to this grid. So I don't even have to mess around with kind of finagling the spacing and everything. So that looks pretty good. We've got this cool looking pergola. You know what I might do is if we want some more shade coverage, maybe we want to make it a little bit of a denser coverage. So I'm going to select all these, copy and paste in place. And just by going like that, I now have twice the coverage and we just need one more. So I'm going to copy and paste. So just like that, you can see it's a pretty cool look. It's nice and flush from the outside, nice and clean. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a pretty easy pergola to build, but it's got a really cool look to it. So now what we're going to do because we have like a hundred pieces here is we want to select everything and we want to group it in place. So this is all one unit. Now I can move this over. This is going to go right on the corner here. Look at that. looks beautiful. And one thing that I want to do with this is First off, I'm going to make this wall a little bit deeper. So we have the width at one foot. I'm going to make it two feet deep because I think that looks better. So that's nice and deep. And I'm going to edit this because I want this corner post. To be built into that wall. So it just looks like it was kind of there on purpose, everything's planned together. Look how nice that looks. Looks awesome. So next step is going to be our landscape, our furniture, and just some of those final details to really make this thing pop. Now we've got all the bones of this in here, we are gonna go to landscape, and I'm gonna put some of the garden beds in here. So we have a couple different things going on. And actually, you know, I'm going to start with the retaining wall tool, which is in the building section. Zoom out here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the snap tool back on. I have a lance raised bed in this corner. So we got six feet, go out 12 feet, back 12 and over six so let's go to perspective you can see this is really tall it automatically puts it at two foot three for some reason so let's see i want this at just 10 inches nice little small guy but it looks cool so i'm also going to change the wall material to something to match the rest of the walls. That's just a nice little small detail. So our next step is going to be some edging. I always like to put this in here. It's good from a design perspective and it's also good from a kind of maintenance perspective for the client because it eliminates the fact of mulch spilling out into the yard, which is always a huge pain. So. We got some of this in here. 
I'm going to edit this because this is like a little raised walkway. I'm actually going to select this, delete it, and we're just going to go straight across. So just like that, this is set at 8 inches. I'm going to bring that down to 4. And I'm going to change the material. What I like doing on this is going to concrete and just selecting a nice solid concrete color. So that's like a gray techo block edge block is what that would kind of be. So we've got one of those in. I'm going to go back to the edging tool. And I like to do most of this in the plan view. I just think it's a little bit easier. So See, this bed's going to go all the way across. And I'm going to delete that point. Take this down to four inches. And change this to concrete three. So you can kind of start to see this taking shape a little bit which is cool so a couple more pieces of edging so we're going to start here and again we'll take that down to four inches and change the material and I forgot that this is going to intersect so what I'm going to do is edit this last bit of edging stop it right there and let's check that out beautiful so we are definitely getting there I'm going to put one more tiny little area in here and if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. This is very time consuming endeavor making YouTube videos and you do not make much money from the ad revenue, despite what some people think. So if you could subscribe, I would really appreciate it. But we are going to go and put some more of this edging in. One more little bed here. Okay. Again, do the same thing. Go to concrete. And you'll kind of get the hang of it. There will be certain things that you kind of do the same all the time. Like I usually use that color concrete for my edge blocks. Um, because a lot of times we'll use the Teco block. Um, either Avignon or Belgique. And that kind of just gives it the same color. So now that we have those areas in here i'm going to go to region and we're going to fill these with mulch oh. again you can see how this is curving hit the square edge tool and this is really easy to do with the snap settings on it's basically just going to guide you right to the area here so you can kind of see, because I started out with this thing on that curve tool, so I'm going to go to edit points, click this, click this one, and I just straighten it out. So you can always go back and straighten things out if you need to. So let's see. Okay. All right. So putting one more mulch bed in here. And now we are all set. So you can see that we have all of our mulch beds in here. Just another element of dimension to this, which looks really cool. So, next step is going to be some plants. So, I'm going to go to the hedge tool. 
this is really nice. I do a lot of hedges in our design, so having this tool made it really easy for me to kind of show what it's going to look like when everything grows together and the hedges look all nice. So see, this is pretty tall, so I usually like to go to two foot width and oops and two foot high so that looks pretty good I'm just gonna edit this keep that nice and close to the wall and I can go to the material and choose boxwood which gives it a nice little bright green color and I'm going to start putting in some other plants here. So I can go to the plant tool, click on this. This is going to open up the catalog. And I'm going to go to shrubs and right here, hydrangea. That's what I want. So let's see. Got one, uh, two, three of these here. Center them a little bit better. And another thing that's pretty cool is I can select all of these and you can see the starting age is 2.7 years just by clicking up a little bit. They are nice and fully grown. I'm going to try to go somewhere in the middle, like three years. There you go. I think that looks great. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So what I'll do is select this, copy and paste. And I'm going to paste again and oops I'm actually going to make this side a little bit bigger I want to show you how to do some ground cover in this area so I'm going to make it, let's see, I'll make it an extra, an extra foot or so. So I've just extended out the edging and you can do that with any of this stuff after the fact by just clicking on that section and going to edit points. So now I have that, I'm just going to kind of center these a little bit better. That looks nice. And I'm going to go to plant row. And just go all over this, all around these. And so you can see it added all these plants in here. I'm going to change the plant to something like this, which kind of mimics a uh, clover or pachysandra or anything like that, maybe periwinkle. So I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. Let's see what that looks like. So that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to edit the points a little bit. So I basically just want this to all be filled. So I'm going to put some more of this in there. And I'll just make these a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll do three and a half years. There you go. That looks nice and full. I like that. And what we're going to have here around this hedge is a row of impatience. So I'm going to go back to the plan view and we're going to click this straight setting. Okay, so you can see it automatically populates with 10 plants. 
we are going to go to, we'll do the impatience. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty nice. Let's add in some more. And let's see what a geranium looks like. That looks pretty nice. I like that. Wrapping all the way around this hedge. So with this little area, you can see we have a step here. I'm just going to put in a couple uh, stepping stones. So what I'm going to do is go to, you know, I can just use the modeling tool. And I just want these to be like two by three slabs. So these are only going to be we can just make them one inch thick, that's fine. And for material, I'm gonna go to, let's see what we have here. Something like that, that looks like a nice blue stone type of color, so. Take off the snap setting. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna position that this way. That looks good. And then all I need to do is copy, oops, delete that. Copy, paste in place. Just align these nicely. Paste in place. And I'll do one more. I'll just select all of these and move them over a little bit so they're centered a little better. That looks nice like that. Oh yeah, nice little stepping stones, breaks it up a little bit. Just like a natural blue stone. And let's see, what do we wanna do in here? I'm just gonna, we have this little small bed on the corner. I'm just gonna put one more hydrangea in there. Looks nice. Okay. And for this corner, we'll put something, we'll put a tree in here, something nice looking. Let's see. And this has a lot of options, but what I typically do if I can't find something that I like is really just look for something that looks similar to something that you have in your area and kind of just go by shape and color so that's typically what i do if i can't find like a certain plant that we use here a lot um, but they do have a lot of the plants okay this looks nice. Oh yeah, I like that. That looks nice. So, let's see, we'll do that. I think that's even a good size too. I'll go to plant again and we'll do like, let's see, I'll just do this right here. This kind of looks like a knockout rose, but you can see how big that is. All I need to do is kind of shrink it down. So I'll put that at two years. That's a cool looking little plant. It's not totally like a knockout rose, but I kind of get the idea. One to two there, maybe that might work. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now I will select both of those, copy, paste in place, move them over here, spin it around. And just like that, I now have two more. I think that looks really good. I'm gonna back this up just a tiny bit. 
And the last thing I want to do here is a plant row right in front. Just a couple. And we'll do some hostas here. We obviously don't need 10 there. We probably need three. Three looks good. So you can kind of see that the ground here is actually below this. So you can explode these and then I can change the elevation. So I want this sitting like right above the wall. That looks good. And I'll just do the same thing I did before with the other plants is copy, paste in place. I want to move them over here and I will spin them around. And just like that, and I'll drop them down just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. So that looks pretty good. We've got a lot of plants in here now. And now it just needs some of the like final touches on this. So I'm going to start by, we'll just do a simple little patio set here. So just this, oops. So that patio set looks good there. Just a little conversation set. Still looks a little crooked. There you go. Okay, you know what, let's go a little above and beyond. We'll do some little end tables here. Let's see what we got. Here you go, we'll use this one here. Little end table. Another little end table, that looks good. Okay, so let's check this again. You can see it's really starting to take shape here. I'm going to do maybe a little seat over here just for some additional seating by the fire pit. We also need a table here. And I'm going to go to the plan view and just want that centered underneath this pergola. So just like that, that looks very nice. I love it. Now you can really see it coming together. So one last thing that I'm going to do here is so I'm going to select the group here, the pergola. And since I grouped that all together, the whole thing moves as one, which is awesome. So we have our dining table here. And you know I'm all about the inlays and the details. And we're not going crazy with this design here. Um, because this is just to kind of get you, get you in the zone with it. So, all right, I'm going to create an inlay here. So we have accent shape selected. I'm going to use the uh, snap tool. I'm just kind of centering on the table. Okay. So you can see, I think maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger. There you go. I like that. And let's see, we'll add a border. You know, I'll do that with the accent strip tool. But I want to change the color of this. We have this like gray and black thing going on. So let's see what else we can do. Whoops. Wrong area. So that was, I did not have this selected. So here's the accent shape. I have it selected now. Let's see what this looks like. That looks okay, but let's see what else we can do. Let 
There you go, I like that. That looks nice. A nice herringbone detail, and I'm going to go accent strip around the outside of this. Just like that. And we will make this do four inches. And I'll do How about something like that. That looks pretty good. I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. So let's go back to perspective. No, I'll go with something else. I'll go with like a dark gray. So I'm just going to go to the concrete. There you go. So we've got just a nice solid, and that could be like a squad or a border. It could be um, Victorian. It could really be whatever you want, but that gives us the idea. It gives us the location that we want. So I'm going to go back to the plan view, and I'm going to select my pergola. And again, because it's all grouped together, I can just drop it right over there. Otherwise, that would be impossible. So that's something you're really going to want to do is group things like this together because it makes it a lot easier. So what else can we do to really set this thing off? So I think that looks pretty good. There's some other things that you can do to really kind of set it off. And it really just depends on how much time you want to spend on a design. But just to show you, we'll do like a little accent strip. Kind of go through the middle here. And do another one from here to here. Okay, so we have this little X detail going on, and we'll do like five inches wide, and we'll do the same thing here. That looks pretty cool, I guess. I'm not really digging that too much, but hey, it's something. So I'll leave it. I think it's pretty cool. What I can do, though, is change this so that it is the same paver that we have for our outside border, which I believe is the maybe the town hall running. There you go. And there is a way to import Teco textures into here. Um, I haven't done it yet, but as soon as I do, I'll probably make a video on that. So this is probably going to be like a series of videos on this program. So there's a lot of little details that, you know, you could always kind of like go into more detail about, but I think this is pretty good to show you just how to make a full complete design. It's got a lot of different elements with the modeling tool, all that. So now this design is pretty much finished. We've got everything in here that we want. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. This covers all the basics, should get you going on your first design, or hopefully learn a couple tricks to improve the designs that you're doing now. But there's a lot of other things that you can do with the software, and it would probably be best for an ongoing series. So if there's any questions that you have, please leave a comment, please subscribe, and I'll try to get to those. But uh, this should be a really good start for you. Hope you like it.